for those that want a seat, there's a few seats around. So we'll call you and uh, have you sit down for those that want to sit. And I'm Mayor Scott Hill, and I want to welcome you to the state of the city and the second annual McMinnville Mayor's Award. I'd like to recognize uh, those that might be visiting. I know um, we've got a number of uh, city councilors here. Uh, Sal, raise your hand. Zach. There, there, we've got a few. Any other city councilors that are here? I know some are going to be with us a little later this evening. Yeah, we've got Zach. Um, anyone from the county? Casey's here. Casey, raise your hand. Um, he, he, was out, he was out with the food. <laughs> He'll be in in a minute. Uh, city manager Jeff Towery. Jeff, department heads, raise your hand. We've got nine-ish of them here. Welcome. Our employees, raise your hand. We've got our great team of employees, a number of them. You know, I'll tell you, I think the, one of the most important groups that are here this evening are our volunteers. And uh, if you volunteer on a committee, whether it's with Park and Rec as a, as a, a coach, uh, fire department, uh, library, raise your hand, because we want to recognize our volunteers. Here we've got a few. Thank you. Mallory, thank you so much for that music. It was just a, it set the tone for tonight. Mallory Mead, uh, very close to John and Jenny. Uh, <laughs> it's good to have a local person as talented as you are. So we welcome you here this evening. If you were here last year, you're going to find a little different format. Uh, we've incorporated the state of the city into our format today as we do our second annual Mayor's Award. Uh, we've had a partnership with the uh, City Club of McMinnville who has sponsored the state of the city. And tonight, they we've merged the th two together and we want to thank them for their covering of the catering and the drinks tonight. So uh, a good hand for the city of <laughs> City Club of McMinnville. <laughs> Ozzy, the president is here and we've got a lot of people from the club. Also, we'd like to thank uh, uh, McMinnville Community Media, MCM, for some of the help that they've done on our, our video presentations this evening. Tonight is all about having fun, celebrating our community, recognizing people that give of their time, talent, and energy to this community. I love McMinnville, and it's clear that our whole community loves McMinnville. Here's a brief video to share why you love McMinnville. fantastic community with many unique and special attributes. This is due to the great planning and foresight by our predecessors. Now it is our turn. Our turn. Our turn. In the next 20 and 50 years, we will grow as a city, growing in population, in homes, neighborhoods, and economy. Our job as a community is to have the discussion and set the stage for the next four generations of people that will be living in McMinnville. What will McMinnville look and feel like for them? How do we grow and not only protect, but enhance what we all love about McMinnville today? For future generations. What I love about McMinnville is... 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 I love McMinnville because of that tunnel of trees downtown. There's nothing like it. Our parks and open spaces, our kids... What? Do, God, there's so many things I love about this place. There's great people, it's a great community, and it's a great place to work in. Our community has a strong sense of service. We have a great staff that is passionate. We live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. The good people doing good things for a good reason. I can't imagine raising my family anywhere else. I love the fact that neighbors can talk to one another. 
I love our community. I love Third Street. I love the people that are in McMinnville. I love a lot about McMinnville. We really enjoy living in a community where we feel safe to walk in our neighborhood, even if it gets dark. I love the fact that the city council and our citizens support public safety. A community of leaders committed to making this the best place possible for you. Come on, McMinnville. Come on, McMinnville. Come on, McMinnville. Tell us what you love about living and working in McMinnville so that we can plan for what you love in the future. How should our neighborhoods be designed? Where should commercial services be located? What types of roads will we need? How can walkers, runners, bikers, and drivers all coexist within our transportation network? What are our priorities for protecting natural resources? Our comprehensive plan reflects those aspects of our community vision and more. It guides how McMinnville will grow in the future. We want to hear your voice, so participate in a project, come to a public house, fill out a survey, and follow us online at mcminnvillematters.com. So get involved. So get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Participate in the discussion. We'll be updating our city's community vision, our comprehensive plan, and talking about growth. Up, out, or a little bit of both. Our goal is to ensure that McMinnville retains all of its wonderful qualities today for the children of tomorrow. Over the next couple of years, we will talk about housing, transportation, environment, natural resources, parks, and economy. Together, we will plan for the future of McMinnville. Today's ideas are tomorrow's world. I heart Mac. I heart Mac. I heart Mac. I heart McMinnville. I heart Mac. 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 I love Mac. I heart Mac. I heart Mac. I heart Mac. See it right here. I heart Mac. <laughs> That's a wrap. Let's do this, McMinnville. Thank you all that have participated in that, and uh, I love Mac as you love Mac. It is a special place. Well, we're to that point this evening where I'd like to recognize a few individuals that are really pillars in our community, people that are truly involved in doing good things. And so this evening, I would like to recognize uh, three individuals for our Pillar Award. The first is uh, Kelly Minky. Kelly is currently serving as a council president, and she's done so since 2007. She represents Ward 2 since 2004 when she was uh, given the opportunity to serve out the term of another counselor. She's retired from her accounting practice after 27 years. Kelly currently is serving as a treasurer and a board member and a volunteer for the soup kitchen at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church. She has served as a treasurer and... Uh, a board member of the McMinnville Chamber of Commerce. She's been on the board of the Habitat, of Habitat for Humanities in McMinnville and the Library Foundation. She brings her financial expertise to the budget committee where she is now the chair of that committee and has served for over 21 years on that committee and also serves on the audit committee. She's a member of the McMinnville Sunrise Rotary where she's been president twice. She has served for many years on the Dundee Newburgh Bypass Committee and uh, has served on many other commissions um, and council positions. She's a listener, she's an implementer, and she has a well-rounded knowledge of, 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 of government and how to work with cities. Uh, Kelly was not able to be here this evening. She had minor surgery yesterday and she said she would be here if she could, but she's not, so she's probably a little bit sore. So we'll have an opportunity to present this to her at our next council meeting. Our next, thank you. Our next recipient is Erin Stevenson. Erin is a life, uh, lifelong McMinnville resident 
and it shows in her love and commitment for this community. She is a University of Oregon graduate, and she's a seasoned world traveler. If you know Erin, you've heard some of her stories, and she's been, she's been many places. Erin has been the director of Habitat for Humanities here in McMinnville. She's been the community um, uh, relations coordinator for First uh, Federal Savings and Loan Association, and she is currently part owner and operator of Third Street Flats with two locations and the new Atticus Hotel, which opened earlier this in 2018. She currently serves as the chair of Visit McMinnville, our local DMO, or better known as designated, designation uh, marketing organization, where she was a founding board member and has led this organization since its inception in 2011. Erin is a communicator. She has strong financial acumen, and she has a, tre a tremendous vision coupled with the ability to implement to success. A hometown girl that has made us proud. Erin. I, I talked to Erin earlier today, and many of you may know, but uh, uh, her mom has gone into hospitals and in surgery today, and so she's by her mom's side, and I let her know that I was recognizing her, and we will recognize her at a uh, city council meeting in the near future. But again, Erin Stevenson. Our last recipient of the Pillar of the Community Award is Jody Christensen. Jody's here. <laughs> Jody Christensen has served as the executive director of the McMinnville Economic Development Partnership from 2006 to 2019. Hired as the first executive director of MEDP, Jody, along with public and private partners, was instrumental in building the organization to the success that we see today. With strong connections to industry and partners throughout the community, Jody has built programs including the McMinnville Works Intern Program, which has helped over 80 young professionals take part in project-based internships in our community and spearheaded pipeline projects resulting in $75 million in projects, uh, projected uh, capital improvement expenditures, and over 700 new and retained jobs. This year, Jody has, was hired as the mid Willamette Valley uh, Regional Resource Coordinator in, the, in Governor Kate Brown's office. In her new role, Jody will cover Marion, Polk, and Yamhill County, identifying and assisting in economic development projects from the, for the betterment of our region and the state. We are so lucky to have Jody living in our community. She's given so much, and she's going to be a listening ear at the state level. Jody, if you'd come up. This is a very unique pillar of the community made locally and uh, made out of glass, so it's just beautiful. Uh, and that you're the only one here tonight, we'll let you <laughs> have an opportunity just to say thank you and uh, Jody. Well, um Thank you. This is um, unexpected. I, I, I was coming here to support the community um, that I love and that it's home for me. Um, several weeks ago, I had the opportunity to say goodbye to several people that I work with. And I shared with them that it's really not goodbye because I will continue to work in this area. But I can tell you I've been doing the work for about four weeks and I am carrying your stories forward. The way that McMinnville collaborates, the way that it identifies partnerships is extraordinary. And people can learn and communities can learn from how things get done here. Because obviously McMinnville matters and there's a lot of great things that are happening in this future. So um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm quite honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, we thank the winners and those who serve so diligently in our community. Um, 
I have the opportunity now to address you on the state of the city and give you some insights of where we've been, what we're doing and where we're going. You know, when I took office as mayor two years ago, um, there was much to accomplish. As a new mayor, I had a number of initiatives that were very important to me. And the first one was the ability to improve the trust among our city staff, city administrators, and the council. It is, at, it is today that I look back over the last two years and I am truly amazed at the ability that this team has been able to pull together we have strong leadership. I would say that we have leadership that is as strong as any community in the state of Oregon. Uh, at the end of 2016, we'd had five of our, our department heads out of nine uh, transition into retirement and other opportunities. We have built a partnership. We have focus. We have passion. And that is so important to me. You know, I look at the book, uh, Good, Better, Great, and, you know, we've always been at that leading edge, and I feel that we are at that great status moving forward to a number of good things that we're going to be doing. This team is providing leadership, and as I said, some of the best leadership in the state of Oregon. We're providing growth opportunities for not only our staff, our volunteers and our citizens. And we're nurturing a strategic and a very innovative culture of where we're going and uh, how we're going to get there. I couldn't be prouder. Um, one thing that I talk a lot about is volunteerism. And you know, I'll tell you, I know it's hard work. You know, it doesn't come without putting forth the, the, the work and the effort. You know, uh, at our last budget, I, I went into our last budget, and we have uh, a full-time and part-time equivalent of about 309 employees in McMinnville. The number that I'm very excited about is our volunteers, well over 1,300, anywhere from the, the baseball and soccer coaches. Uh, we, we bring in our volunteer fire department. We have a lot, we have two groups that support our library. All of them work very hard. We have, we have uh, numerous committees that meet on a monthly and sometimes uh, twice a month basis to do a lot of the work that supports the council. As a council, we could not do what we do, and staff, many times we couldn't do without the, the hard work of our committees. So if you are a part of a committee in this community, raise your hand. We've got a number of you that are. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Now, once we at the city had a strong leadership uh, team in place, it was time to look at the projects that we had on, on our docket and, and to start looking ahead. And so I'm going to talk about three or four of those areas this evening, the first being the urban renewal program. Back in uh, 2013, as a council, we started to study and we started to look at the development of an urban renewal district that would support our downtown and our Northeast Gateway. We, we had, a, uh, we had a, a group to come in and help us and we understood that we were going to hopefully be able to raise $30 million over 25 to 26 years. The thing that was a little uh, that we couldn't get our hands around is how fast that was going to grow money that we could uh, use as seed money to grow those districts. Well, I'll tell you right now how successful we have been. We have, we have grown faster and had more success than I think the city council had back in 2013 when we started to do the, uh, look at the urban renewal. We have, we put together a, uh, we put together a urban renewal advisory committee and uh, that turned into an advisory committee that is still working today. Some of our successes have been the Atticus uh, Hotel and that has brought a $6 million investment into our community and they are working strong and future uh, investments look to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $2 million a year coming from them being in town. As you know, our Alpine Avenue, 
uh, is now we have the footprint, we have the infrastructure to grow. And as a saying would say, build it and they will come. And we've seen that happening before our eyes. Uh, we're seeing a, a rejuvenation of homes and businesses on Alpine. We're seeing landmarks uh, like the Huber shoe grease and, uh, uh, and having an opportunity to see the impact that we're, we're seeing there with upgrades to the Mac market. We're seeing a number of other businesses that are moving into that marketplace. Our facade and our technical design grants are being utilized. We have five grants, two loans for a total of 189,650. And that is coupled with private matches of well over $2.2 million. And there's much more to come. So again, urban renewal is working well in McMinnville. Another area that I'm so pleased to be a part of, and that is Visit McMinnville. Again, Visit McMinnville was started in 2013 as we looked at passing a transient lodging tax and we created an advisory committee. I can remember in those early days, we were looking at how are we going to effectively bring marketing to McMinnville. We did much looking at vendors and programs and we were able to come up with a, a plan that we felt would was McMinnville's plan, and that was the birth of Visit McMinnville in 2015. Um, Jeff Knapp and Kitri McGuire were, were hired. We had a board that was working hard. We were meeting on a weekly basis. And today, that board is still primarily intact, working hard. And as you heard, Aaron chairs that committee and green, provides great leadership. But we know today what our transient lodging tax brings to us. Let me give you some things. We've seen an increase in our occupancy uh, rates, average daily rates, demand for rooms and additional rooms uh, coming online, uh, and especially the success at the Atticus. Um, we have driven over a quarter of a million unique visitors to visit McMinnville.com. We have hosted top tier journalists from around the world, and we've had Articles in Vogue, Sunset, The New Yorker, Food and Wine, Forbes, and Brides Magazine. And all together, we have generated over 5.5 times that McMinnville or our attractions have been seen or viewed by people around the world. At no cost to you, we have great resources and benefits coming to this community. The last area that I'd like to share just a little thoughts about is our transportation bond. You know, this is something that has uh, been is in before us because of the support of our citizens. And real quickly, Fifth Street was accomplished this year where we have a thoroughfare from Adams all the way to Lafayette with one light at Evans. And that has become a thoroughfare that's taking traffic off of Third Street. At 2nd and 99W, we have turn lanes and we have synchronized lights that allow us to pass that intersection that was truly a bottleneck. And that is made second a thoroughfare that's taking traffic off of 3rd Street. I talked about Alpine and that was a, a $4.3 million enhancement of infrastructure with um, that coming from our transportation, uh, two million of it coming from urban renewal. We've had sidewalk infill throughout the community to make it safer for our kids to go to school and needed areas, corridors that needed to have sidewalks. We have rehabilitated or repaved 13 miles of pavement in this community that typically are not on us, our schedule of repaving. Uh, Hill Road, if you've not been out there, you need to go out there. It is beautiful. An area that was scary to walk, jog, and ride a bike, and sometimes at night even to drive, has been brought up to urban standards. And it's going to be, when it's completely done, is going to be so very um, visibly going to enhance that part of our community. Our last project is the old Sheridan Road, and that's going to be initiated uh, this year, and it'll be a two-year cycle, and replacing the bridge and connecting us from uh, 99W to um, Cypress uh, Road and Street. 
We've enjoyed a partnership with McMinnville Water and Light, who has worked hand in hand with us to underground many of our utilities in these projects. And so that's going to truly help us to uh, move forward and have a, a, a much better visibility in these communities. Well, we've done all of this and we've set out a foundation. We have a team together and now we're moving into what I call phase two and that's a strategic plan. And so we're going to, ex we're going to focus on what McMinnville needs to look like or what you think McMinnville needs to look like over the next 10 to 15 years. And we call this project Mac Town 2032. I want to introduce our city manager, Jeff Towery, now, Jeff joined us two years ago in 2017 and has been leading this organization with an eye uh, to the future. He challenges the council and within the city to think strategically about our future. So, Jeff, if you'd come up. Thank you, Mayor, Thank you, Mayor Hill. Thanks, everybody, for being here. So why would we do a strategic plan? Well, McMinnville is a remarkable place, and I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. We stand on the shoulders of the giants who came before us, while McMinnville is here by an accident of geography, and we ride the rising and falling tides of economy around us. This is a great place because people who were here before us, and some of whom are in the room today, made really thoughtful, high-impact, long-term decisions about this community. I think it's our chance and our obligation to make sure that McMinnville stays great and gets even greater than it is now. Please turn your attention to the screen and learn a little bit more about Mac Town 2032. Thank you. How do we thoughtfully decide which opportunities to pursue? They got input a lot of different ways. Well, I thought the process was really well thought out. Events and engagements where people showed up, participated, had their voices heard. And that's really our charge, too, is how do we take this wonderful, magical community and make sure it stays wonderful and magical and even it gets better as time goes on. I was just so incredibly heartened by the fact that the city was embarking on a strategic plan. Reaching out to engage stakeholders, uh, community leaders, all the economic development leaders. From housing, education, agriculture, employment, livability, and so it was a huge scope to cover. The planning and the research and the studies they've done, it's pretty amazing. People are really engaged. I've been really impressed with how many people we've been able to reach out to through interviews and surveys and stakeholder groups. Defining the priorities uh, through engaging and listening in a proactive manner, I think is really uh, forward thinking. Absolutely a worthwhile exercise right now for us to ask ourselves those big questions as a community. Who are we? And who do we want to be? I live in, in McMinnville. I feel a responsibility to do what I can when I'm asked to try and contribute to a positive city government citizen relationship. You know, there's so many great programs that people give their time to, time that they really don't have, but they give it because they're so dedicated to preserving the, the quality of the community. I care. I care about the future of McMinnville, and I care about the today of McMinnville, and I care about being able to hire good people. I care about my employees being able to live here and being able to afford housing. I care about the quality of the public education. And that we are attractive to the right kind of people, people that want to come and be here and care about their employees, care about the community. How to thoughtfully grow what we have so that we have jobs for the children of today and that we're able to continue to be viable as a community moving into the future. Uh, my oldest son and his wife chose to come back to McMinnville to live. And I think of that as one of the achievements of McMinnville, which is that it, it has formed itself and it has developed itself in a way that provides opportunity to its children. It does not drive its children away. I think it's important for people to know that there there is a lot of change happening. Retirement and leadership changes, and through that, um, there's a lot of opportunity, and the strategic plan really is, is, is a tool by which we can all 
sort of steer the ship in the right direction. And I think the investment that the town makes in planning, in studying what the potentials are, is going to pay off 20 years down the road when you have a community that everybody still loves and still thinks the best place to live in Oregon. Thank you, Jeff, for that uh, uh, introduction, and I know you've been so critical in that path of, of uh, uh, Mac Town 2032. I just want to let you know that as a council, we have accepted the plan at our last um, council meeting. Last Friday, we spent all day, literally all day, in picking out the priorities in the seven areas of focus. And so we now have an opportunity to know where we're going over the next one to two years. So again, thanks all those that participated in this process. It truly was transparent and it had so many participants. Thank you. Well, this is the part that I've been looking forward to. This is my opportunity to recognize an individual with the Mayor's Legacy Award. The Legacy Award is someone who has given totally to this community over a lifetime, has given and given and given. Last year, we had an opportunity to recognize Dave Hogelberg, and Dave is here, and he was our first uh, award winner. You know, I, uh, when we talk about legacy, it's things that have been done in the past, but Dave and our recipient tonight continue to be as involved in this community today as they've ever been. And so I think that's what legacy is all about. It's past, today, and future. Well, let's turn our, our, our attention to a video and uh, see who our award winner is going to be for this year. When visiting 3rd Street, we see the beautiful historic buildings, twinkling lights, and the hustle and the bustle of our community. We enjoy this McMinnville treasure because of the efforts of all those who have come before us. One of those stewards of McMinnville has left an undeniable mark on our community. Today, we honor a man who has made a lifelong commitment to public service and improving the lives of all of us former mayor, Edward J. Gormley. Ed has always had a deep connection to this area. He attended St. James Catholic School in McMinnville and then Jesuit High School in Portland and received his bachelor's at Gonzaga University and his master's plumber's license in 1976. Along the way, Ed met and married the love of his life, Candy Jones. They have two daughters, Kim and Corey, and four grandchildren. Returning to McMinnville after college, Ed began working with his father at Gormley Plumbing, following in the family trade, and in 1977, he purchased the business from his father and ran it successfully for over 40 years. His public service began in 1974 with an appointment to the McMinnville Planning Commission. Then in 1980, he was elected to the city council and elected mayor in 1984, going on to serve six terms, finally capping a 24-year career in 2009. While in office, he was the driving force behind many of McMinnville's largest projects, including the water reclamation plant, the sewer system improvements, the central fire station, the aquatic center, an 80-acre sports park, the senior center, and construction of McMinnville Water and Lights Administrative Office. He was also key in passing the city's first new tax base since 1916 and spearheading the first city manager selection process in nearly 30 years. Always thinking of improving whatever he was involved in, he started the council goal setting process, fought for staff development and training, established employee award programs, and expanded the use of fire, police, and library volunteers. 
Ed has also been instrumental in established financial support for the McMinnville Downtown Association and ushering in the Downtown Economic Development District. He also guided the creation of the Yamhill Countywide Emergency Communication System. His long-standing involvement and dedication to both his business and the community of McMinnville has earned him numerous accolades over the years, including the Oregon Small Family Business Award, the National Plumbing Contractor and Oregon Contractor of the Year Award, and received Alumni of Merit Awards from both Gonzaga and Jesuit, and was appointed to the Oregon Training Council in 1997. He has also been a key member of numerous union and company boards, including those for Willamette Valley Medical Center and McMinnville Water and Light. In 1990, not satisfied with the status quo and looking to expand his community involvement, he and his wife Candy began one of the highlights of the year for many McMinnville residents, the annual Mayor's Charity Ball, raising well over a million dollars for McMinnville's Kids on the Block after school program, which improved the lives of many youth and families in our community. Ed exemplifies the belief that we are put on this earth to help and serve others, and often says it's all about collegiality and civility. It's about recognizing people and their worth and treating them the way they should be. Ed's legacy is one of community involvement, deep caring, and a drive to keep improving and moving forward. And it is with the utmost respect and regard that I, Scott A. Hill, Mayor of the City of McMinnville, present the 2019 Legacy Award to Edward J. Gormley. Ed, if you'd come up. Candy, Candy, if you'd come up also. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Candy, we know a, we can't do this without the support of our spouses. And Candy has been so critical in the success of, of Ed. We'd like to present this to you. Thank you. It doesn't help. It doesn't happen without support. I promise you. It will come. Ed, this is the Mayor's Legacy Award for 2019. Congratulations. Well, thank you. If, if I may, this man is a mentor to so many of us in this room. Without his love and his teaching, his example, Many of us that serve in the community today would not be doing that. I have the opportunity of sitting on the McMinnville Water and Light Commission, and uh, is it getting close to 35 years, or are we over? Uh, Thomas? <laughs> I think we're over 35 years that he's consistently been helping out at McMinnville Water and Light. Again, phenomenal passion, very forward thinking. Many of the things that we are taking advantage of today comes from his ability to bring people together and just to get it done. Ed, if you'd say a few things. Mayor Scott, thank you um, so much. Um, I'm at a loss of words and if, <laughs> and Thomas, if you, can, if you can believe that since when, right? <laughs> I remember you cornering me at a water and light meeting and said, um, what are you doing on the 29th of of January, I said, we're going to be in uh, Arizona. I'm not flying back till the 1st. Uh, you got to change it. I need your help with something. But don't ask me what. <laughs> so I said to Candy, something's up. Uh, we got to change the flight. So, so I did. We flew back today. But uh, what, what a nice thing to come back for. So thank you so much. And um, I, I can't, as I look at those things, there's a bunch of credit given to me that, that you know, I might have I signed the document. But Honestly, Kent had so much to do with those things that, that you're giving me credit for. So I, I want my partner in crime to stand up some there. Mr. Taylor. There, there he is. He's incognito with a beard, but, <laughs> but, but um, 
he and I had a wonderful, over two decades, we worked, worked together and, and uh, we managed to stay friends and, and... <laughs> no. <laughs> so there's a whole story on how Taylor got hired, but anyway. <laughs> Those of you who know the rivalry of Central Catholic High School and, and, and Jesuit, um, the last question I asked him when we interviewed him was, was he going to have any problems working? Let's see. I made some issue out of Central Catholic, but we weren't sure we could hire somebody that, I mean, he looked at me strangely and stuff, and that's when I said, well, I graduated from Jesuit, so it might be tough, the two of us getting along. Well, we had a very close love, love of each other and great, great support. My dear friend, Tom Tankersley, who's chaired the Water and Light Commission for many of those, well, decades that I've served with it and stuff it's been it's been great but honestly uh, you know i signed those papers scott but a lot of folks in this room deserve uh, lots of, uh, of accolades for those those things that i got to help and be part of um interesting enough tonight i said to jay pearson do you remember what this week is how, how many in here ever attended a mayor's ball there's got to be a bunch in here you know what the mayor's ball, it was a date we set in stone, first Saturday of February. February. Well, guess what? This coming Saturday is the first Saturday of February. So I said to Jay tonight, think about it. For years and years, I used to call you up and say, hey, it's Tuesday. I know. Can, can we get in early and start doing stuff? And, <laughs> but for Candy, that meant the, the year's worth of, of organizing and, and um, putting things together. Pam Watts is here, who helped lots of years doing that. But this was the week we put the thing together and and held the show, the plumber's prom, as Doug Hurl referred to it. So anyway, and my, my story was the reason it got started was that, that, you know, I went to an all boys high school and my folks thought I was headed to the priesthood. And the only place I learned to dance was at the Elks, but that was in grade school. And, you know, I mean, I couldn't dance worth a hoot and she, she loved to dance. And in college, I took her to one dance, but we never danced. <laughs> so I said she was getting even with me by starting the mayor's ball. So anyway, but... Um, I have here tonight my daughter, Corey, and my two grandsons that um, are wondering why they couldn't see back there, and my son-in-law, <laughs> Kurt. So so anyway, the, the, for all the work, I mean, the, the Gormley kids grew up doing that stuff, and uh, uh, one of them thought it was okay to have their dad be the mayor, and another one, was, it, it interfered with parties and never got invited when she was in high school to things and that. And um, Anyway, I also have my brother Dan and my sister Nancy. Us Gormley kids, you know, grew up here, all went to St. James and, and that. But uh, so anyway, and I, I see uh, a whole bunch of uh, my neighbors out here and folks from Michael Book that I do stuff with. And, and I, know, I know Candy must have been uh, making, burning up the phones or something like that. So anyway, thank you for all being here, here tonight. It's been... Um, I, I often say that we were brought up wrong. We were brought up to save the world. Right? Yes. That's, that's all. That's what the Catholics in the 50s and 60s were, you know, not unlike the, uh, my, my friend here and stuff. So anyway, um, what's fun is to see things change and the spirit that's come. And uh, Jeff Kent would never spend the kind of money it takes to put this stuff on. He just... <laughs> it was just too frugal. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Taylor, do you remember the night that I show, showed up as, as uh, Floyd Turbo? Any, anybody know who Floyd Turbo was? Johnny Carson? Mm -hmm. It was the old hunter from Maine. <laughs> had the hat he pulled down with ear floppers and a big red hunting coat. So, so one night I started the meeting. I said, just a minute, I got to leave. So I went to the back of the room, put a red hunting jacket on and that hat and came forward. And Taylor just looked at me and said, you know... Uh, why? <laughs> but we had lots of levity and lots of fun. And um, I'm just, just uh, again, th thank you all. Uh, and thank you for all my friends being here tonight. S some of our staff people I see out here, Carol, thank you for being here and stuff. And, and neighbors, thank you. And um, anyway, Scott, thank you so much. I'm glad I came back tonight. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate you. Well, that ends our program for this evening. I want to thank all the award winners, take the opportunity to thank them and give them thanks for everything that's happening, all those that volunteer. 
I'm excited about 2019 for we have a strategic plan, we have a direction, and we're going to continue to make McMinnville the place that's so livable and so great to be a part of. Thanks for coming this evening.